Jeremy here from Left Brain Logic. So we've recently had a situation where we were putting in quite a few bills and we needed to kind of streamline the process and get those bills into QuickBooks a little bit quicker. We were just going directly into QuickBooks, putting those in, um, using their tools, and, and we just needed to find a better and, and more efficient process to get those bills entered. So we've created a tool that allows us to import the bill from an Excel file directly into QuickBooks. At the same time, a lot of the bills that we were paying or entering were set up so they were automatically paid through um, like a bank ACH or, or um, like utilities where we would have auto pay set up. Um, and in those circumstances, uh, it actually took quite a bit of time in QuickBooks to go in, put in the bill, and then go in and enter the payment. Uh, so what we did is we actually, as part of this Excel file, we actually added information so that we could not only import the bill and post that into QuickBooks, but at the same time, we attached the payment information so that uh, the process would import the bill and then immediately it would create the payment for that bill as well. So both of those things were taken care of at the same time. Um, this process has significantly uh, reduced the time that it takes to enter our bills into our system. My guess would be at least, at least half the time um, that it used to take. So this is a pretty big time saver. Uh, anytime you have a lot of bills being put in, it's just, it's just a lot quicker to put them into a, a spreadsheet format and then again, it's just a single click of a, a button and those bills and payments are immediately pushed into QuickBooks and posted on there. So let me show you this tool. Okay, so before I get into the, the details, I just wanna show you real quick how easy it is to post bills into QuickBooks using this bill entry spreadsheet. So I've entered bill, bill information. I've got two different bills in here. I've got one for Bruce's office machine and one for this Daigle lighting. Uh, these bills are all ready to go, uh, and if I uh, open up QuickBooks real quick, you'll notice I've got Bruce's office machine in here. Um, or I'm showing it with, there's no activity in there. So once I post this, it will be the only bill and payment that's in here. So with this ready to go, I can go ahead and hit post bills. You'll notice the status OK pops up in all of these, and it's, it's there. If I bounce back over to QuickBooks, you'll notice now I have a bill in there with a payment. It's good to go. That's all it takes to post bills. Okay, so let's dig into this spreadsheet just a little bit more so you understand what's going on. There's actually three different sections in this table. We've got the bill details section, I've got the payment section, and the post status section. The bill section has two different parts. There's the bill header information, which I mean, um, pop open QuickBooks right here so you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, so if I open up a bill, this header information is the same information that you usually enter in this bill, the top bill section. So you've got the vendor code, which will match this. You've got the bill date, which will match this field. You've got the due date, which will match this bill due. And then you've got the reference number, which will match here. The amount due doesn't need to be entered because the system, as it's posting the bill, it will add up all of the, the expense lines, and that will become the bill total. Um, so we don't need to, to enter that. This section, the uh, section that's just a little bit lighter blue, um, that is in reference to the expense section. So you've got an account, you've got a class, You've got an amount, and you've got a memo, okay? So as you look at this workbook, the header information only needs to be entered once. You only put that in once for the bill. That's the vendor code, the bill date, um, due date, and reference number. The expense portion, you might have multiple expenses for a particular bill. So in order to enter those, you just continue to enter those going down, and you leave the the header information blank on those lines and when it's posted it knows that if this field is blank then this expense belongs to this bill and so it will continue to post those until you come to a new bill and you can enter new vendor information here and then the system will recognize okay this is a new bill and this expense belongs with this bill now the payment section is completely optional you don't have to put anything in here if you left this all blank when you posted it, it would post the bill information and it would not post any payment information. Um, 
if you do want to put in a payment information, the only required field is the bank account that you're going to pay it from. If you leave the well, if you leave the pay date blank, when it pays that bill, it's just going to use the same date as the bill date. So if I were to post it like this right now, I would have a bill on 2-1 and the payment would be entered on 2-1 as well. But if I want a date to be entered, the payment date to be a different date, I can put that in and it will go ahead and post it on that date as well. Um, but again, you don't have to have any payment information in here at all. If you don't, it will just post the bill. Um, the post status section never needs to have enter, uh, information entered into this. Uh, as, you, as the system posts these bills, it will record the status from, from posting it in this section. So it will give you a status of whether or not it, um, it posted okay, and if, if, it's, if it's not okay, it will give you a, uh, an error, some kind of description of what the problem was. Um, this status is for the bill. So this is saying that this bill was posted okay. This payment status is for the payment. So if I were to post this bill without a payment, this would be blank. Um, the transaction ID, the bill transaction ID, this is just a unique number that comes from QuickBooks as it's posting it. We need to keep track of that because as we make payments, we use that transaction ID to identify the bill that that payment is applying to. So that's pretty much it. There is one other required field. There's this AP account field. Uh, some systems, some companies have multiple accounts, payable accounts, and if your company does, you can select the accounts payable account that you want to use for these bills. Um, most companies only have a single AP account, and but that does need to be selected. If that's not selected, you will get an error when you try and post it. Um, and just so you kind of see what an error looks like, I'll go ahead and I'm going to delete this status information in these fields, um, just so you know when it posts these bills it reads the current status in here and if it says status okay it's not going to try and post that bill again but if it's empty like i just deleted it it will try and post them so i'm going to go ahead and post this again and you'll notice right away i get this error saying there's an invalid reference to quickbooks ap account blank that's because i don't have an ap account in here but if i were to go in here and actually put one in here then i could post it again and this time i'm going to get status okay and again, you notice because I don't have a payment in here, the payment status is blank. That's because it didn't post a payment. There wasn't anything to enter. So the bill is fine. It didn't post a, a payment. So that's the bill entry worksheet. Uh, it's been a huge time saver for us. Hopefully it will be for you as well. Uh, but just recognize that this is a basic template that we designed to meet the needs of most companies out there. But every company has their own unique challenges. And if you have some uh, challenges that you're trying to address and you feel like if we adjusted this to better meet your needs uh, that it will become a, a better tool for you, we can be reached on our website at leftbrainlogic.com.